Hello everybody. Today we're going to look at a teardown of the Bose Home Speaker 300, which is part of their most recent line of smart speaker devices and completely incompatible with their previous line of home speakers, the SoundTouch series. But enough for complaining about that. Let's take a look at what is inside the speakers and what's the secret behind their sound. So I just looked at the bottom of the speaker and uh, turns out that underneath those two rubber pads, we find screws that give us access to the interior. Let's look here. Oops. So we're just gonna open the four screws that we have located here. Okay, so then you want to carefully lift the bottom panel and just pay attention. There is a flat band cable located right here. And um, I tried to unblock this, uh, this flat band cable from here, but I, it didn't really come out for me and I didn't want to break anything. So I just decided to open up the two screws here so that the PCB is free and not attached to the bottom pad anymore. Okay, so that is for the micro USB port. Okay, and then we got four Phillips screws. And then we can carefully lift up this piece of plastic and ooh, what is that? Well, I did a bit of research about that and it turns out that this is what Bose calls a deflector. So as you can see, the speaker is located just right here. And the idea is that the speaker just, um, that this deflector just distributes the sound equally in all directions. Yeah, that's it. And as we can see, we got the speaker right here. So I think probably if you want to replace the speaker, you might already be close enough to do so. But we're just going to look further and want to remove this aluminium cover at the side. So in order to do that, we just need to carefully unplug the flat band cable that is located just right here. And then we can simply move the aluminium cover up. And here we are. So now we can take a look at what's behind the speaker. And then we can carefully lift the speaker up Whoops. and it's going to come out. And um, I was really surprised because that speaker is attached with three cables, not two, as I would actually have expected normally. And I really don't understand what the third cable is for. So we can also see that only two cables are actually really connected with a speaker coil in here. So. I don't know what that is for. And there's another drawback of it. Unfortunately, the speaker wires, let me just make sure you guys can see that. Yeah, unfortunately, the speaker wires are soldered to the PCB here. So yeah, if you would want to replace the speaker, you probably want to unwind the cables here and reattach them back to the new speaker because that PCB is not easily accessible yet. But let's, may, let's see how far we can get. And what you can also see inside here, we have, um, just make sure you guys can see it, yeah. So we have the base port that comes out of here. 
And if you look inside here, you can see that this baseboard is folded and it looks pretty long. So I think that might be one of the secrets behind the really deep bass that the speaker delivers. And we can see there is some acoustic foam right behind the speaker driver. Okay, so let's see how we can continue to ring it down. I will just insert and, and uh, yeah, I will just insert the speaker again. And then let's have a look at what we got here. So here we have, so it seems like this might be the amp because it looks like there is a heat sink mounted on top of it. And there we got a ARM Z or ARM7 processor. So I think that's the main processor of the speaker. And um, I actually wanna see if I can yeah, take that whole thing out of the speaker top. And um, there are just some screws behind the, yeah, behind the glue pads here. And let's see. You want to be careful about that. Those screws have different lengths. So I will remember that those are the screws from the back part, no, from the front part, and those will be the screws from the back. Okay. So let's see. Okay, so that took me a while to figure out how that actually works. So I thought at first that you can just lift that up, but that's not how it works. You now have to move that piece down a bit like this. And here you will find some more screws that fix the top panel here. So let's take a look at that. And now we're able to remove the top cover. Nice. And there is a flat end cable. So let's just see if we can unplug that. Also it doesn't come out. Yeah, so. Just carefully unplug that flat band cable. It doesn't come out too easily, but it comes out. Okay, so what do we have here? Let's just take a look. So I assume those are the LEDs for the banner animation on top of here. Our flat band connector. We do have some chips here. Yeah.
I can, I would need to look them up separately afterwards. Okay, and we should somewhere also have the microphones because the mics are uh, mounted on top of here. Ah, here we got it. Mic one, mic four. Ah, that's the LED for mic being disabled. Then I was trying to check if I could actually completely remove the PCB from the top part, but turns out that they use a pretty strong adhesive, so I didn't continue my endeavor to completely dis disassemble that top part since I didn't want to damage anything. Okay, so let's just take that away and see what else do we have here. So on top, there is nothing more. And now that we remove the cover, Let's see if we are now able to get to the core. And now we can, oh yeah, carefully, very, very carefully, we can now remove it. Yes, here we are. So that is the, yeah, <laughs> mid part of the speaker. Let's just place it here. And that is, looks like that is our main PCB. Um, so we do have flat band connectors for the USB port here, for the um, aux port and for the power supply. That must be the main uh, processor unit. That must be the amp with the heatsink mounted on top. And that cable goes inside to the speaker. And looks like there might be even a bit more inside since we do have, um, yeah, quite a lot of connections. So that may not only be the speaker here. And that goes to the top. So to the microphones and to the LEDs. All right, then let's look behind the main board. up the main board we can see that there is still this connector let's just carefully remove it and here we got the main board So probably we even got the CPU underneath that heatsink, but I'm not sure about that. I will check what those chips actually are. And so I did. So we have an ARM STM32L431RCT here, and that is probably not the main processor of the smart speaker, since it operates at a very low clock frequency of only 80 megahertz, and the other specs uh, that I found in the data sheet didn't really tell me that this must be the main processor. So my current assumption still is that the main processor is located underneath the heatsink, maybe along with the amp or whatever is, but we don't really have good access to see what is underneath the heatsinks since that is um, yeah, glued together and I really don't want to remove anything here since it looks like it's really fragile and I could, yeah, break something very, very easily. Okay. And then 
we got our speaker enclosure and yeah it looks like that is so that is really a sealed enclosure so I really don't see how we would have good access to whatever is inside here um, so maybe but I yeah I really don't think there is a good way to open that enclosure no it doesn't look like anything here so I've been trying to check if there is actually a good way to disassemble the speaker enclosure but I really didn't find good access. So to me the only way to get access inside would actually be to completely remove the speaker which is not easy since it's hard soldered to the PCB that's inside this, this enclosure and uh, yeah so I didn't really have a good way to look at the inside of this enclosure without destroying anything. So that's it for the teardown of the Bose Home Speaker 300. Um, that is the main acoustic yeah, unit, I would say, with the speaker, the base port. There's another PCB inside there, but I really can't tell what it does. Since there are a lot of connections going in there, it might be there is even the amp or some other kind of post processing located inside that main unit. Um, and yeah, that's it. Pretty, pretty interesting.